Okay, welcome again, everyone in the room and also people in the chat. If you are unable to hear me, to hear me, put something in the chat and I will know. Uh, my name is Meskima Bastion. I don't want to talk about my story, but um, I want to thank all of you for being here tonight in the room and those online. This is the first step to finding out about our suffering mind. Our suffering heart is just to have interest and to show up. Back many years ago, Mark used to tell me, just show up. That's all it takes. Um, I also would like to thank, express my gratitude to Mark, who's a teacher for 29 years in the, at this center not just my teacher, but many, and um, also Common Ground. This is a spiritual home for myself and many where we have been studying and practicing. So this is going to be a four-week journey where we each learn about our heart as it is, and um, learn together, explore together. And Mark, pass it to Mark. So welcome everyone and to our new hybrid world. So we have about the same number of people on Zoom as we have in the room. And so about 30 of us, a little bit more maybe, on this four-week journey. And Meski uh, did a little bit of introduction. So a lot of what we like to do at the beginning of an intro class is just get a little taste of what it means to be present. And you'll see immediately like, oh, okay, we're going to meditate and sort of thinking there's got to be a certain way I should look if we're going to meditate. But obviously, there isn't any particular way. So don't feel like you got to do anything with your posture. Just notice now, if you would, just notice what the mind is knowing or what the mind is doing. And it might even that you're noticing some self-consciousness because of the question I just asked. Okay, the mind is knowing some self-consciousness. Can you feel the bottoms of the feet making contact with the floor? Or if you're sitting cross-legged, just feeling the feet, the sensations. Can you just let those sensations in the feet be the way they are? Being present and just letting the experience be. Can you bring your attention to the sensations in both legs? Simple sensations like the slacks, your pants making contact with the skin, or the bend of the knees, or any touch points along the legs, pressure points, feeling both legs, both feet, just as they are. It might be unpleasant. The sensations might be quite neutral. But can you just allow the sensations now being known in the legs? Can you just allow them? to be the way they are. So you're not needing to be in control. You don't need the experience to be different than it is. How about the pelvis? Bringing the attention to the pelvis. If you're sitting 
on the chair, feeling that contact. You sitting on a cushion, feeling the contact, the pressure, the structure of the pelvis. So much of what we'll be doing these four weeks is learning how to be intimate with the present moment and letting things be the way they are. So feel the abdomen, all the internal organs, the belt against the skin, clothes against the skin. So the lower part of the torso. And again, just a willingness to feel what's here. We're not trying to fix anything. Just willing to be open, even exposed what's going on. And then up into the solar plexus and the kidney areas, the middle of the spine. Notice any touch points, any tension here. Then up into the shoulder blades, upper back, rib cage, the chest, collarbones. We'll take a couple moments and feel the whole torso. So basically from the sitting, the sits bones against the chair, the cushion, all the way to the shoulders. And we're in this receptive mode. We're just feeling what's here to be felt. Almost as if we're listening to the torso. And then more specifically feeling into the shoulders, tops of the shoulders, shoulder joints, even the sides of the neck. Just let the awareness settle and accept and receive and allow. Not afraid to feel whatever we're feeling now in the shoulders. Down both arms, the bend of the elbows, the cool air against the skin. Notice any touch points where the arms are resting in the lap or the hands are touching. The relative heat in the palms. We're just taking a few moments to feel both arms, both hands, and seeing if we can just let the experience be. And one of the things we'll notice is that just feeling both arms and hands, the experience is moving or changing, right? Isn't it alive? These sensations in the arms and hands are alive, they're changing, evolving. So notice that changing quality of sensation. And then we'll bring the attention to the throat and the entire neck. Again, this receptive, patient, curious, presence with the neck and the throat and whatever sensations are here to feel. Can we just let these sensations be the way they are and the neck? Aware, but not needing to judge, not needing to fix, just keeping the neck in mind.
and then the face when you're ready. You might feel the air touching the skin. Notice whether there's any tension in the tongue and the jaw around the lips, or is it relaxed? Notice the touching as the air goes in and out of the nostrils, that simple contact of the air passing. Noticing any tension or relaxation in the eyes, the brow. If your eyes are closed, you can even feel the eyelids against the eyes, that subtle touching. Feel the scalp, the top of the head, and the ears, the back of the head. And just feeling the entire face and head together. And again, just seeing, can I just let these sensations be? Just allow them to be what they are. And again, we're learning how to be present without being controlling. Now let's bring to mind, feel into the entirety of the body now, the sitting body, aware of the whole body. And more specifically practicing being unafraid, undefended as we just open to the movement of sensation now in the body, just as they are. Maybe discovering that it's safe enough to just feel what we're feeling in the body, to relax and allow. And just explore what it would mean to have a continuity of present moment awareness. So using the sensations of the sitting body as a kind of anchor or meditation object, just keeping this present moment experience of sitting, physicality of sitting in mind. So here the effort is not forgetting. So the wisdom in the mind has this ringing truth. Sitting is like this now. It's really simple. The experience of sitting is being known. It's like this now. Feels like this now. Can it be okay to be feeling this? Yeah, it's okay to be feeling this and just letting the experience be what it is. And now the interesting thing about present moment awareness is it's not something we actually turn on and nor can you turn it off right now. Can you, can you shut off? Can you stop being aware? That's part of the nature of the mind to be aware. When we're not distracted, the awareness is right there naturally. I just sense that nature of the knowing mind or the nature of awareness that knows that it's like this now, naturally and in a sense, effortlessly, when we remember to recognize.
And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Adjust the posture if you need to. Yeah, so I'll pass it back to Meski in just a moment, but what we did, you could call that a body scan meditation. And it's a meditation you can do for your practice at home. But countless times during these next four weeks, and then hopefully almost an infinite number of times after the course ends, each of us in our own way will be reestablishing this simple capacity we all have, our minds have, which is to recognize the present moment. What we mean by being mindfully aware, and Mesky is going to talk about that now. So pass it, and I'm going to shut that door because other people in the building. So I am not necessarily asking a question, but did it make did it take a lot of effort from any of you to be aware? It's always there in the background. We get pulled into distractions and thinking. But then when we come back, it's there. I've been meditating for many years. Um, Shelly and Mark led a retreat this past weekend for eight days. And it was being silent for eight days in the middle of Wisconsin. It really does something to your mind. But my takeaway was remember like you have to remember remember you just be aware you don't even have to do anything remember i think we just keep forgetting and complicate things so much and just forget to be in the body in the present moment because the tendency is to worry about the future or think about the past and the body really gets tight with all this and it adds up. So in this four weeks, we talk a lot about just coming back to the body, coming back to the hearing, coming back to the present moment and just high level, um, I want to just cover a few things. When we say mindfulness, when we say awareness or open presence, what does that mean? They are not three different things. In this context, we are going to use all the three interchangeably. So we are aware of the present moment just as it is. That's mindfulness. There is this presence here and now, and it's kind of really hard to describe in words what here and now is, not necessarily a place and time, but in our heart, we know what here and now is. So that presence, that open presence is, is going to be used interchangeably with awareness and mindfulness. So just people are aware. So what really is mindfulness? Like, um, remember a time when maybe you had taken a walk in nature? Let's see if that remembering, like it could be a dancing fully was just engaged without really thinking too much. And um, any of these things that come to mind, does it take a lot to remember? right now.
So awareness is natural. Um, this attentiveness, this openness where we're not trying to change anything and we are not demanding, like the body is sitting and we're not really like, like I gotta move, you know, not that, but even that, we know that this anxiousness, I need to move is what the mind is knowing at the moment, but we don't pay attention to those things. We just, when we eat ice cream, it's how sweet it is or whatever that we are thinking so much not necessarily just oh this is cold being it's cold is being known whatever whatever the feeling is the feeling of chocolate just eating the brain is being known so we don't really divide it and name it at the moment but just being intimate with the way it is without adding too much or demanding too much or moving forward in the future and just understanding our own experience as it is. Um, so in this practice, mindfulness awareness, it can happen anywhere, anytime. It doesn't require a certain posture or a certain religion or background, anything. But there are four sitting postures that are recommended. Sitting, walking, standing, and lying down. So in this next four weeks, you can experiment any one of them during your daily activity. And just come back to remember, oh, my arms are moving. So I'm chopping up vegetables. So whatever, whatever you do. So anything will do. But the sitting posture is one of the postures that we practice with mostly here at the center. And everywhere in the tradition, this mindfulness meditation is practiced even though walking is equally used, but to ground the mind to sit comfortably, it's most likely a little bit better than the other postures where there is relaxed sitting and wakefulness. Like lying down for me really... <laughs> is a recipe for disaster. I may just last five minutes, otherwise I would just fall asleep too relaxed. So, but as we practice, we wanna practice with everything, just getting the mind to settle down, just to be grounded. The sitting posture is really helpful. It supports wakefulness and being aware and recognizing. And, and once the mind is, settle down and sometimes you can't sit for too long either so walking meditation or the other postures will do but why sitting meditation is that's the reason why i don't know what time we have mark oh this time there's more you wanted to say otherwise i can uh, say a little bit back about the background yeah yeah so i'll, I'll pass it to mark Maybe I'll turn the light. It looks like it's a little dark. So the lights up. So the sun's going down. How's oh, the sound of your water? Is that not very okay? Just let us know in the room if you can't hear us. And because we have a PA system, we can turn on if we need it. Yeah, so with uh, what Meski just said in mind, we'll do some standing practice in just a minute, but just because it can, for some of you, feel a little strange to be coming to a Buddhist meditation center. And as Meski said, we've been here now since 1993, so quite a long time um, for the first 15 years, seven blocks to the east. And 
since uh, we bought this building in 2006. So we've been here for a while now. But uh, there are different types of Buddhism. This uh, center is in the early Buddhist tradition. Sometimes uh, in the Asian context, you'd call it Theravada Buddhism, the kind of Buddhism you find in Thailand and Burma, Miramar, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Laos. And uh, early Buddhism has a really pragmatic, almost psychological quality to it. And it really comes from this, you know, what attracts people like to a place like Common Ground. You know, a lot of the people who come here, maybe the great majority, I, we've never asked, you know, wouldn't necessarily consider themselves Buddhist, but they're definitely interested in the mind or the heart. And one of the amazing things I'm sure you've noticed is we human beings, you know, we do a lot of things. We build cities and interstates and write books and raise families. But one of the things that's more rare is, even though it's so relevant, what's really rare for humans is to take some time to use their own heart, the sensitivity of their own heart and mind to study the heart and mind. It's like, and clearly, you know, the fact there is this knowing mind, this feeling heart right here, that's relevant. <laughs> you know, it's not like a small detail. And in a way, early Buddhism, Buddhism generally, you know, they, the Buddha, this person who lived 2,500 years ago, he realized it really helps in figuring out how to be a human being and the causes for stress and the causes for release. It really, really helps. It's almost like essential that whatever time we have beyond the basic survival, you know, putting food on the table, things that we have to do to get along, to use our heart and mind to turn inward. But it doesn't, I mean, we have this form that Meski will guide us in in a little bit, the sitting meditation form, and we're asking you to invest in this particular form, but it's really in the service to this lifestyle of present moment awareness. That's really what the class is about, cultivating a value and then a new habit or a deeper habit to be present all day long. And so the formal sitting time is really like going to kindergarten because when we're sitting in a quiet room or outside in a tranquil space, sitting relatively still, as Meski was mentioning, the form of sitting is nice because it's uprightness. It's both comfortable, but not too comfortable. Like you can do have an effective lying down meditation for five to 15 minutes, and then it's called napping which is fine because those first few minutes, there's a lot of ease in the body when we're lying down. And as long as your mind is interested in the present moment, you can learn a lot from your mindfulness practice until you get drowsy. So definitely use lying down, but use sitting as your primary training ground. And some of you have the retreat center common ground bought the family that built it Amish family built it. They had 12 kids. So you might be someone with 12 kids and you may only have literally five minutes to yourself before you're exhausted. You got to go to bed or something, but that's fine. Then that's your five minutes set. You've got a chair, you put it in some corner of your home or a cushion. And if you can, if you've got enough space in your home, have a little place, that is designated for your practice. You might have to use it for some other things, but it's nice if it's in an uncluttered corner of your home and to invest it like, this is the place I go to cultivate present moment awareness, mindful awareness. And this tradition that we're part of, being present, you know, establishing present moment awareness, being aware or recognizing that there's a knowing mind, knowing, right? That there is awareness. That really 
is the essential tool for the mind learning about the mind. The mind having insight. That means, you know, we this tradition we call insight meditation or vipassana meditation here in the West. That's more what you hear, not early Buddhism or Theravada Buddhism. People will refer to common ground as an insight meditation or vipassana meditation. Vipassana just means insight in the Pali language. And insight means the mind, the knowing mind, the sensitive heart, heart and mind, really the same, is seeing, learning something that hasn't seen or learned before about the nature of the mind, nature of experience. We're waking up to what's always been here, but we've been so externally oriented. One of my teachers jokingly said, you know, our conditioned habit in terms of how we pay attention is, can I eat it? Will it eat me? Can I mate with it? <laughs> Those are our three interests. <laughs> Will it eat me? Can I eat it? Can I mate with it? And otherwise, we're sort of not interested. So now we're kind of looking back. It's almost like we're in a movie theater. It's a really engaging movie. But we're interested, like, where is that light coming from? You know, we walk around back and we go to the little room behind where they have the projector and we're checking out the film and we're getting interested in how the movie gets made. And so the movie is kind of that normal narration, the meaning making that the mind is doing, the story and the way we perceive, the way we the mind constructs. And we're really observing it in this non-judging way. But we'll get there in the weeks ahead. Initially, and Messi's going to guide us in a, a breath meditation in just a few minutes. Um, initially, we're really interested in just learning how to drop so much of the drama and the thinking about this and that. I mean, the mind will go back constantly. And we'll use more concrete aspects of the present moment, like being with the breath or being with the body or being with hearing and learning to bring a full tension there. But why don't we take just a moment to stand and stretch and before we have the introduction and the guided meditation. So that means you folks at home too, you can move your body a little bit and we'll get started again in just a minute or two. Is the mind knowing the standing, the movement? Yeah, we do a lot of things so automatically and think the drive home or whatever, you know, it's like, how did I get here? For me, it's usually in the morning, my coffee, like I have to really have coffee half the time. The coffee's done and I can't believe I finished it. Like I, oh my God, the whole time I was not here. I don't know. I was doing something, but the mind wasn't really drinking with the coffee. And half the time it surprises me how much I'm not attending to what's happening. So, um, You are also hearing while you are standing. You also paying attention to that, or there's a mind kind of aware it's happening. Yeah, a lot is happening. Sensations are happening. Um, so you can sit down, find a posture that is supportive. If there is more cushions needed or blankets, you could just. Yeah, it's in the closet there for anybody needing uh, additional. The folks online, you can also sit and just find a posture that supports your body. 
we're gonna move through um, breath meditation, but let's just really relax. Take, take a moment to relax and we have really forgotten how to relax. I don't even know what you have to do, shake your hands, whatever it is that you wanna do, but just relax. Don't fall asleep, relax. <laughs> Not having too much intention or attention, but we just wanna kind of make a vow to be here in a relaxed way. Knowing nobody has to do anything, awareness itself will do. what is needed. So this week we're gonna be exploring this physical anchors that really happen in the body. So the breath being one of them, it's continuous, it's constant, it supports life. Also this body, this whole body that we inhabit and really forget that it is there. Mark has done as a body scan earlier and hearing. So these are like the very concrete uh, anchors that we call objects in this meditation mindfulness practice that we would be practicing with. So depending on your temperament, like some people may want to feel the breath right in the nostrils where the, breeze are, the breathing is coming in. And some people may feel it more in their chest when the chest is rising and falling. So wherever, wherever you feel it most, bring the awareness to that part and pay close attention to the breathing in. You know that you are breathing in, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to take a deepest breath, but you can if you want, but allow the body to breathe in naturally. Just bring your awareness to the breathing in and then allow that same breathing in when it moves out. So the breathing out, it's easier to just pay attention to one thing, but we can follow the breath all the way when it comes in till it leaves out, which really allows the mind to settle and be anchored with the present moment. So breathe in naturally. Recognize that you are breathing in. If you want, if you wish, it's easier. You can even make a mental note. Breathing in is being known, being recognized. When you breathe out, you can recognize that you are breathing in. So you don't really have to get entangled with whole the whole words. You could just say breathing in, breathing out mentally. You could do that if it's easier to keep the mind settled in the present moment. And it's very natural for distractions, other objects to come in. Just be open to my voice as well, that it is hearing is here. 
but even if you hear my voice or the fan going on for the next 10 or so minutes we're gonna completely focus on just breathing in and breathing out and recognizing in this exclusive object of the breathing being known and the breathing out, breathing out, being known, breathing in, being known. And the biggest part of this practice is when distractions in the mind is get caught by either thinking or some other thing or pain in the body is felt. We can know that's happening, but we just say, I'm just going to pay attention to the breath and just come back. It's starting over and over and over again every time. Because when we are distracted, we don't know it. But when we are aware again or remember to be aware again and that's a moment of coming back and recognition that's a moment of mindfulness so there is nothing to be done other than that paying attention back to the breathing in and the breathing out don't have to get tight you also can remember to relax with the breathing just have to be attentive open and present And as the mind and body settles in, the breathing may get refined, may not be as coarse. That's fine. We are just recognizing 
here is breathing in. And when you breathe out, there is breathing out. It is not so much focusing, you know, so hard. It just really is effortless. Most of the time, we don't even remember that we are breathing. We are just connecting. With the breathing as it is in each moment. It's so ordinary. It's mundane. But this connecting and this breathing and knowing all the sensations of the in-breath and the out-breath Allow the mind and the heart to open. Just in this context, we use the mind, the heart. It's the same thing. Just tuning in to what's happening. So if we find ourselves either struggling, sleepy, am I doing this right? We just have to remember all that is an activity that for this moment that we are choosing not to be attentive to. And just put it aside, let it go, and then come back to the present moment just with the experience of knowing the breathing in and the breathing out.
even though we have made a commitment to just sit in the same posture and pay attention to the breathing in and breathing out, you know, we may have an itch that we think that, oh, I have to itch this or not even think about it and do that. It's fine. We still come back to the breathing in and breathing out. And if it is something that we don't have to do, we just recognize, no, I don't, I don't have to do. We'll see if it passes on its own. Sometimes the mind, when there is a little bit of room and silence from the busy, the busyness, then lots, lots of things may show up. Just anticipation, when is this going to end? Planning about the future. Or what happened yesterday? This is all natural. That's what the mind does. So we begin again and then come back to the present moment. Knowing any of these activities that take us away from This present knowing and recognition of what's happening in the body-mind at this moment is either a movement towards the future or the past. So that's a habit that is going to take a long time to break at times. All we have to do is just be patient, relax, 
Remember, awareness happens on its own. Come back to the breath in. Follow the breath in all the way. And follow it out. A new breath in, new breath out. Again, if it's easier, mental noting is okay. Breath is being known. Can this be okay? It's breathing out. Can this be okay? It's being known. We know what, so what the mind is knowing. We just connect, see awareness, what it is knowing at this moment. So what we have been doing thus far with the breath meditation is just anchored in one object. For the next couple of minutes, we'll just switch it back a little bit. And we're gonna do an open awareness meditation. So there is no doing required again. But instead of being so exclusive on the incoming breath on outgoing breath, now we would just recognize anything that is being known that's predominant. If the hearing is predominant, we recognize hearing is being known. And sometimes the mind tries to note all the things that are being known, but we don't have to decide maybe what is it's really coming in at this split second, maybe a knee pain or a back pain. And we could say, no oh, pain, the pain is being known. Maybe the fan in the room is the most predominant. And it's also okay to open your eyes if you wish. You don't have to, just a, a gaze. What may be predominant as you open your eyes could be just the seeing. So this is this open awareness is a practice that supports daily activities because we are not sitting and just paying attention to breathing all the time. We have to train the mind and heart that it will also be recognizing all these other things that are coming up. And sometimes more than one thing is predominant. And that's okay. Again, if it's easier, we can note quietly in the mind, the pressure in the body is being known. 
in the next moment, they may be thinking, but whatever is really pressing, that's what we would note. So we will be exploring this further in the next four weeks. And you're going to hear a bell just to note that the end of the meditation period. So just so you are aware. Thank you for your practice. Um, so I wonder if you have any questions or if something came up. This is a time to discuss about practice or questions here in the room as well as online. And uh, often we say at the beginning, we learn so much in these discussion times where different people are either asking a question or just stating or doing their best. It's not always easy to articulate like it was like this for me, you know, my mind, my body, I related in this way, then this happened. Almost like a blow by blow, a little, 15 second place, 30 second place in their meditation, because it really normalizes what it's like to have a mind, having people. And then it gives Mesky and me an opportunity to share from our, our own experience about like how the practice shows up in those moments. So the people online, you can, if you know how to digitally raise your hand, uh, if you don't, on the bottom, one of the icons is called reaction. If you click that, you'll see the raise hand link. And then that way we know, like Abby just did, that, that you have a question. And then Mesky and I will make our speaker loud and we'll repeat it if we can't hear. Go ahead, Abby, unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Abby. Um, I just wanted to note that there was a lot of energy in my body um, and I kind of felt it falling away throughout the practice, but it was still very present in my hands. So that was just something of note. Thanks, Abby. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very normal to feel, you know, sometimes tingling energy, it, it all depends on, uh, we haven't been sitting a lot, so it, it expresses itself in so many ways. Some people just feel they are a little bit floating up. And for me, it was yawning. When I started, I just couldn't stop yawning. I'm like, what is wrong with me? And it, it only was when I was sitting, so it wasn't like I was tired. So it, it's very normal just to feel different sensations that the life energy moves in a different way and you feel it 
either in your hands or top of your head, whatever. Thanks, Abby, for sharing. Yes. I can actually, hear you. Yeah, or... but the people online, well, you know, in their perfect yeah. world, you know, actually, this is something that they hold this. That way, the people online can hear the people online. Hi there. So for longer sits for me, I can get through what feels like claustrophobia, like halfway through. Um, and it just is a little bit like I'm stuck. Um, and then it'll go away. But I've noticed like for shorter sits, I don't experience it at all. It's like for the longer sits. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And uh I mean, you're going to get a sense just from the first two comments that pretty much anything under the sun will and can happen, including really blissful, expansive healing experiences, dark, disturbing experiences, ordinary experience, really anything. And one thing that's pretty common, especially like you mentioned, when we are sitting longer when there's more confidence that it's okay to let go of the normal thinking, what will happen is the mind will go to new territory because what the mind is very familiar with is the mind, that inner dialogue, that ongoing narration. It's kind of creating a picture, a story. And over our lifetime, we get very comfortable living inside of the story and drama even if our dramas are kind of toxic at least they're familiar and so then when we cultivate mindfulness there will be moments when that thinking the drama the intensity of that inner narration it starts to quiet down and will be more in a simple presence and of course it's healing and it's safe but it's unfamiliar. And that unfamiliar place can bring up some anxiety. So the claustrophobia would be interesting to look is the claustrophobia that you're noticing the constricting nature of the ongoing narration. And because that's one way it shows up. Another place it shows up is just the being unfamiliar with this space of being present. And the, it, it's so weird that that just the non-distractedness itself is a rare and unusual experience for the mind. Somebody once asked a famous teacher, you know, maybe about uh, 40 years ago, um, I'm, I'm a Buddhist monk, like, how would you characterize the world this, these days? And this monk responded, lost in thought. Because <laughs> that's, that's our... You know, if we were to add up the moments today, how many moments was there an awareness? This doesn't mean there wasn't thought, but there was that simple, clear, relaxed presence. Oh yeah, thinking's like this. The mind is thinking. No, we're lost in the thought. Like Mesky was saying, drinking their coffee in the morning. Like, what happened to the coffee? I must have drunk it, but I was not aware. Or some of you drove here tonight, you're going to drive home. To get home, I must have driven home. I must have made all the right turns, but I wasn't aware while I was driving. You were conscious in the sense you made the right turns, but there wasn't that reflective awareness. Oh, it's like this. Now it looks like Tony has a question. Yeah, um, I'll just comment. I. Uh just fell asleep probably seven times during that thing. And every time, Mesky, when you started to say something, I jumped. <laughs> so that was my experience. Yeah, Tommy, I, uh, <clears throat> I used to work a lot. I mean, I, I think at the beginning, sleep wasn't a problem, but, and then, when I go on retreats, and I mean, I have to fess up, but 
if I went on a 10 day retreat, I would sleep the four of them. Like the first four, I'm completely zoomed out. But, you know, either we are sleep deprived or there's too much relaxation in the posture. So we will, we will talk about, you know, strategies of like how to stay awake and so on. But one simple thing you could do is just open your eyes okay, um, and see like when you feel sleepy. That is if you catch it, but sometimes you can't. So it's what it is. Yeah. I don't know if this happened in the room as well, but if you haven't been sleeping, that would show up. And it's kind of, you know, evening. But for me, it was happening even in the morning, all day, no matter how much I... And then, I, and then after a few days, I would... I would be fine. So I know it was overworking. One thing uh, just related to what Meski was just saying, and this is a nice uh, takeaway because, you know, Meski and I have said a lot tonight and you won't necessarily remember a lot of it, although we are recording it. And uh, we'll put it, we'll send it out in the email for everyone to have that. And before I forget, in that email that Robin sent you today, there's a link to the new to practice webpage on our website. And it has handouts for the intro class. And there's six of them, because normally we have a six week intro class, but uh, because I'll be out of town, we made it four weeks for this fall. Um, but anyway, a simple way to remember what you're doing. So we learned the body scan meditation. We learned the breath meditation. We learned hearing meditation, right? So these are the three ways we practice tonight. But just in general, to remind yourself, what am I doing? What is this mindful awareness stuff? You can just remember two qualities that we're bringing together. There is the alert, bright, interested quality of mind that we're going to be developing all through these weeks and for the rest of our mindfulness career. And then we're just as interested in the relaxation, the allowing, the trusting. And now the interesting thing for you to be exploring all the time when you're meditating and, and through daily life is how the two qualities work pretty well together. Because we generally think I can be relaxed, I know what that's like, and I can be bright and alert and vigilant, I know what that's like, but I can't do both at the same time because they're opposites, but they're not opposites. They're actually, they support each other. How relaxation allows the mind to be more bright, interested, intimate, clearly connected with the experience that's being known. Relaxation supports alertness and alertness really helps us to relax because we we can be sensitive with that alertness to all the ways we're holding, right? Oh, I can, I can put that weight down. I mean, it's like we're wearing not just one, but many backpacks because we're not alert that we're wearing many backpacks. So I can put that one down, I can put that one down, I can release my jaw can relax the brow, you know, the grip and the anus, the floor of the pelvis, you know, a lot of, got that grip going. Oh, that can soften. It's like, and that's just a gross level of tension. And then there's just more and more subtle levels that we're just holding chronically all life long. So just remember, like, whenever you forget, like, what's the essence of this stuff Meski and Mark are talking about, or the Buddha's talking about? Oh, yeah, that bright, alert interest coming together with that relaxed, trusting, allowing, receptive. And you can just choose one word for both of those qualities. So it's easy for you to remember. And you can just prompt yourself. Can we have a little time? It'd be nice to have another question or comment. Yeah. Do you mind coming up so I can mouth? I can hear you.
Hi, everyone at home. Hi, everyone. So um, uh, I, I was also one who was falling asleep a lot. And I am recovering from a pretty major brain injury uh, that I sustained before Christmas. And but I'm guessing that if there's anybody here who is either recovering from long COVID or recovering from trauma, um, that they are going through something that is similar to me, which is a brain that is either constantly in flight or flight, fight or flight, or is dead asleep. Um, and so that was my challenge today because I was very, I would very quickly go into what appeared to me to be a dream state. And no, no, that's dreams cut, but back it up, you know? And so I think that that's my challenge right now. And I don't know if that's anybody else's challenge right now, but um, I just wanted to sort of like put that in words because I was, I paid attention to it today. That's it. Thanks. But thanks for sharing that. I had, uh had COVID last year and besides all the pain but just the fatigue itself yeah. so it's it's a whole different thing <laughs> a whole different thing uh yeah yeah mine was intense the first whatever 20 days but what you are talking about, however, is you noticed, you see, that that piece, even though you, you fell asleep and then you really are thinking like all these things could be the cause, you are like, oh, I, I noticed falling asleep. That's awareness, you know. Now the gap is going to be a little bit better if you were awake, your body was feeling better the whole nine yards. But there's all kinds of resistance anyway. So it, it's absolutely fine to, I don't, I don't want to say like the intent is like, let's, let me just sit down and fall asleep the next 20 minutes. It's not, but yeah, it's, I, I mean, I just recognize what you recognized is more celebrating than I was sleeping the whole time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you raise your hand? Hello, everybody. Is there a line of distinction between our entire conscious experience and everything we think and feel and the mind? Is the mind like the kind of undercurrent subconscious that reacts with that? Or is the mind just kind of what we are as people and what kind of pairs with our body and everything that we see and say and do? I guess that's kind of a big question. Thank you. And we have four weeks and the rest of our life to answer that question. And the important thing, like Besky and I could probably talk for an hour about our ideas about what the mind is, but it wouldn't be that helpful. So we can check right now, each of us, anybody, well, first, let me just, anybody online or in the room doesn't have a mind. Okay. So we all have a mind. So not what is the mind objectively, but what is the mind, the experience? And remember in Buddhist psychology, mind, heart is the word citta, it's the same. So I'll say a little bit about it, but just check. What is your experience of what we call mind or heart? Directly, immediately. And this experience you're having. Interestingly, we don't know what to do with that question. I mean, you kind of like, we look and then do you find anything? Kind of yes and kind of no, right? Like when you look for the mind. So here's an interesting thing. Don't, don't worry too much if this seems a little weird, but the experience we're having right now, so maybe you're seeing me or you're hearing my voice, so you're feeling your body sitting or you're thinking about a snack when you get home, you know, but whatever it is, where is that experience being known right now? Where is that being known? In the mind, right? 
It's because that's what the mind does. The, when we say the mind or the heart, we're talking about that which knows. So we're not really, you know, conventionally, I'll say I'm at, I'm in the meditation hall at Common Ground Meditation Center in Minneapolis, sitting next to Mesky with a bunch of folks learning about mindfulness meditation. But actually, this experience, which is, includes the experience of sensation being known and sight being known and sound being heard and maybe smells and tastes being smelled and tasted, but all of that is being known in the mind. That's an experience of the mind knowing. So the mind knows. So in Buddhist psychology, I know that it can sound a little weird to say this. This is what we would call a moment of mind. Now this is a moment of mind and then another moment of mind. So these successions of a moment of a mind knowing, or you could say a heart feeling because heart, mind, we're just talking about that sensitivity being known. There's something being known, something being known. And it's all happening here and now. Present moment is a moment of the mind knowing. That's what the present moment is. So we're not arguing whether, is there a physical reality or not a physical? It's, we, don't, we don't need to answer that. Because we know subjectively that right now this experience is being known. And we say, the word we use, it's being known by the mind. That's our experience as a human being, successively, always. Something is being known. Something is being known. Something is being known. And with this practice, we're observing things on that simplistic, direct, immediate level. And it's not our habit. So even though, like Mesky was saying, it's simple, almost effortless, it's also really difficult because it's so simple and subtle. We're keeping the knowing quality of the mind in mind, or we're practicing recognizing and not forgetting this knowing, this awareness quality of the mind. And it changes everything because it really allows, you'll see, for a lot of learning to creep in. We just start learning how to be a better human being, a more skillful human being, how to drop what's extra, how to hold on to what's useful to hold on to. Without even you or me trying, just emphasizing that recognition of the present moment allows for profound learning to happen. And we just do the best we can, whether we're sleepy or anxious, swinging back and forth. Like Mesky said, we just begin by appreciating that it's being known. Like that was good to recognize that exhaustion. Oh, it's good to recognize that activation. Probably. Yeah, so are you good? So we'll leave the discussion here. Um, and just talking about returning next week and maybe maybe you, you there may be some resistance for all of you it's like i've had enough or this is too much sitting and i'm too sleepy um so we would ask that give it the whole four weeks to kind of decide and see um in the coming weeks we're gonna explore actually some some of the more subtle ways you know, emotion is just one of them where I don't want to say we all struggle, but, but it's a big part of our life. So it, it, what we covered today is more concrete things, subtle things, but thinking, for example, it's really hard to catch because we believe it. And then we are just already entangled with thinking, not even thinking that it is something being known already by the mind. So those would be the uh, things that we cover in the coming weeks. And as part of the practice, so what we have covered today, you could just, as Mark was saying earlier, I, whether it's five minutes that you have or 15 minutes or a half hour, 
try to dedicate like a sitting and just apply this. It, it's just the, the words doesn't do anything. It's the actual sitting and doing the practice um, and see what comes up, you know, whether it's resistance or all these emotions, which is so many things show up when they get room. So it's very normal that we've been disconnected and zoning out from life. I would attest to that myself. So that may come up, but to not be discouraged and to start over and yeah, and just see where this exploration text takes us. I know I, I forgot to cover like why meditate. I also would encourage all of you to just kind of look into that question. You probably have already a question why a reason why you came in an intent but just to reflect on that like what kind of moved me to this to want to take this class so you know that that's we are all looking for freedom we are looking for happiness so there may be a reason but just to kind of sit with that and i will see you next week hopefully and I want to thank all of you just to having the courage to say, I want to pay attention to my life. It's, uh, it's just the shortest, simplest thing. I just want to be here for my life. I don't want it to pass by. So that's kind of what brought me here. I don't know, 12 years ago. So thank you, everybody, for your practice. Mark, anything else? Stop. Yeah. See you next week, everyone. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone online. Good night. Have a good night.